uh, thinnest area, about seven times that distance, or about 21 degrees wide astronomically. So this is a long passage. It takes about 2,000 years. There's some ambiguity as to whether it uh, occurs at this particular day or that particular day, just like entering the age of Aquarius. Did it occur in 1985, as some of the astronomers thought, or did it occur today, as others seem to think? And probably both are true, depending on how wide you look at the transit of the two. So the um, 30 million year cycle is part of a larger 250 million year cycle. Unfortunately for us, we're completing the smaller 62 million year cycle that has us bounce at the top end of that magnetic plate. We actually have demonstrable evidence that supports this particular conclusion. That evidence is the collapse of the magnetosphere and all of the outer planets, the pushing down of the heliosphere, because there's no evidence that it's actually been reduced in the amount of energy going into it, merely that it's a lot smaller than it used to be, and the alteration of the magnetosphere within our own planet, as well as all of the other interplanetary uh, climate change. So you can dispute whether or not we're ever going to get to the, in this particular cycle, to the, to the center of the uh, galactic ecliptic plate, but it doesn't matter because what we're actually going to has to be thought of as like a uh, porcelain, as though in a porcelain doll. It's a hollow structure that's got an outer shell casing, and we're about to go through one of the shells of the eggshell, so to speak. And the width of that eggshell is 21 point some odd degrees. Astronomically, we're three and a half degrees wide, so it'll take us a while to get through both of the halves of the shell. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Probably. Okay, and there's a slight gap in between. Right, right. Well, that's absolutely a, 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 a wonderful explanation for them. I so appreciate that. That's really a good one. Um, and we're, what we're going to do here, Cliff, in just a couple of seconds, we're going to go and take a long break. It's about five minutes because we do have some other affiliates coming on at the top of the hour. Okay. And when we bring you back, um, I'd like to go through the rest of uh, the Report 6 and maybe get to uh, a couple of those questions before we have to let you go tonight. And uh, this has just been absolutely fabulous. I'm telling you, I can't. This is just really good stuff for people to to know about. So, for the rest of you, what I'd like for you to do is sit back, kick back, listen to some music. We'll be back with Cliff High right here on Journeys with Rebecca right after this. Welcome back, Cliff. Thank you much. Did you get your pie? No, actually, we're we're having German chocolate cake. Ooh, now that sounds nummy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. here in the studio just put their thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> had the coconut, and so we just had to go for it. Well, yeah. there you go. You got it. You got yeah. it. Love German chocolate cake. Having, my mother used to make it, and it was very good. Um, there's a couple of things that um, I, I wanted to kind of get started with, uh, Cliff, and there's a couple of things that... Um, that we're going to get into as far as uh, the number six, because before we have you leave here tonight, we're going to have you wrap up, um, you know, kind of the whole report there with the, you know, bottom end of it there with the sure. number six in it. Um, but there's a couple of things that um, people have asked, like uh, y- your partner George Ewer yeah. has mentioned the the bird flu pandemic. Um, also, we uh, people want to know... Um, when the release language or when the language uh, sees uh, actual martial law being enforced and where first. And the third question is, what kind or type of shortages should we expect in the near future? Not far out, but in the near future. Right. Uh, Again, these are, okay, the latter two, the idea of martial law and the idea of shortages, we have to uh, say that these won't be national in the sense that uh, we can have martial law imposed uh, locally for a variety of conditions and in fact it's a going undergoing or un- underway now in a creeping form to get everybody used to it we're seeing examples of this showing up in the linguistics all the time that uh, certain exercises are being conducted and we can put them all together in a large pattern that suggests that the powers that be are using the military more and more frequently and we can expect some like a, a peak if you will of that activity in November, December time frame as we get into this next round of crises. So um, we may, in fact, though, get to a situation where the, the military and or militarized law enforcement 
and that's really a misnomer anymore. It used to be we had peace officers, right? And then we had law enforcers. Now we've got these guys that are paramilitary. They're trained by the military, right? And they're given all these, uh, which is a bad thing, and it's very core because of a concept that is missed by most people, and that is that peace officers are there to enforce the peace. Law enforcement is there to enforce law. Military is to kill the enemy. And you don't have the idea of an effective relationship with the citizen with the military. So militarized law enforcement, in spite of any of their propaganda to the contrary, tends to create a mindset within law enforcement of us versus the enemy. And thus we have all of the, mili- we have all of the issues now of the police going too far in their dealing with average citizens. That will get a lot worse over summer, and we expect to have some level of peaking or much more visible military activity in November, December of this year. Will it include martial law? I don't think that's pertinent. If you have military on the street, it does not matter whether they've officially declared that they're going to subject the citizens of the country to a military justice system or whether they're going to enforce the civilian justice system at the point of military guns. It's kind of moot, really. Yes. Okay, so it's really a declaration. The idea of being afraid of it is, I think, um, if you're afraid of it, you're already there, so you might as well give up on that idea. Right, gotcha. Okay, the food shortages, or the shortages, in the immediate are going to be spotty and kind of strange according to what we're getting. So, in other words, as the various systems break down over March, April, and May, we're going to get to the situation of where if you happen to be close to a factory that produces drinking glasses, you won't have a shortage of drinking glasses because they'll be able to get them out to a local distribution. But that same drinking glass situation might not apply a thousand miles away. This will affect all kinds of goods in a sort of seemingly episodic and erratic and sporadic manner that will coalesce over March, April, and May to present a much more dire view of the totality of resources available, at least here in the U.S. It's hard to say how it's going to affect people in Europe. We know that other developed nations, especially Britain and to some extent Australia, will get into the same sort of mess that we're in here in the U.S., but places like France, Spain, and so on, that are and Italy, that are still much more village and uh, localized, will have the ability to revert without the pain that we're going to have to go through. Okay. Okay, so we do expect shortages to really show up in March, April, and May. Where you are and what shortage in particular is going to be just um, a matter of location, 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 I think. Okay. And then the bird flu pandemic. I don't know about bird flu per se, but we're getting a situation where there's going to be a lot of disease problems, especially in the U.S., uh, through this, um, say, late October through January, February of 2010. I, I don't know if we want to say bird flu or not because I don't think it will be pertinent, but we're going to get into a situation where those very same shortages that are going to be hitting us are going to hit, the, for instance, the pharmaceutical industry, and we're going to have a shortage of drugs, not because of distribution issues per se, but because some intercontinental distribution issue or economic issue is going to affect a base material. And so, for instance, you might find whole regions of the country that wouldn't have flu shots. I'm just giving that as an example. Sure. Um, but the, the total effect of it all over the course of uh, spring and summer will be that a lot of people will no longer have the medication that they need, which is going to put an increased burden on our health care system, which will already be suffering from reduction in resources that can be applied to it, and it's going to reach a critical mass in November, December, as we get into a new season of, um, of illness that will be exacerbated by poor diet, stress, and this terrible summer we're going to be going through. Make sense? It does to me. Okay. Now, um, I want to kind of have you talk a little bit about, there's several things here. I'm just going to kind of run them in, and you can just sure. you know, pick them off as you need to. Um, found it interesting that the data sets that were uh, accruing is in support of body shielding, face covering. That was an interesting thing there. That relates to the UV mm. issues as well. Mm. It looks like maybe we're going to have some kind of, plant uh, or planet affecting plant die off that will cause maybe dust bowl conditions but will also have polluted rain in areas where people will start really going to the trouble of wrapping up their faces and so on and even in their hands to when they go outside okay makes sense and then um, I the idea here that the rising unemployment rate is actually uh, of course they've they've 
the numbers are going to be much higher than what they're saying, and then that's supposed to come out. And then also about the fashion shift. What is that? What is that fashion shift? In the fashion shift. Right. That's the that relates to the um, the problem with the covering of the face. Imagine a situation where we're in a uh, that we're in right now at a very broad level. You have the old uh, patriarchal. Uh, control system guys trying to exercise their with the last remaining resources they get hold of their ha- hold on power and one of the ways they've been able to do this is through homeland security etc and we get to a situation where weather conditions and other conditions like the disease maybe a lot of people want to start wearing masks to avoid being exposed to disease so this is a shift in fashion to where now we have the idea of um Oh, people bearing more and more flesh, but we're going to soon get to a position, probably by this coming fall, where that trend will be reversed, and people will want to cover up a lot more, making everybody a lot more anonymous, just at the time that the powers that be roll out their facial identification software and all of their scanners, and you've got the Homeland Security people starting to freak out, because everybody's wearing masks. Uh Uh-huh. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? And then they'll have to respond, but it'll be environmental uh, or other pressures on a broader scale of the populace that will be pushing us to make those fashion shifts. And, you know, the UV issue cannot be trivialized because currently uh, T-shirts, for instance, provide a UV level of what? Protection. Right. You know, five. Right. And so we're going to have to get to some serious level of dressing to deal with the UV and other energy bombardment that we're already getting into. And if the heliosphere shrinks down below the inner planets, and thus we no longer have the sun's magnetic uh, shielding as well as our own, and we're left to just what the resources of the Earth, then we're going to be in a world of hurt. That's pretty interesting because, uh, you know, uh, there was, uh, oh, it's been many years ago, but they started... uh and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was in uh, Australia, where um, all of the children that are in school are all having to wear hats and yeah, uh, yeah. keep sweaters on or jackets on when they go outside um, because of the, the sun, the UV radiation from that. Right. And, of course, we know that this is an issue, particularly in the south, at that time because of the ozone holes were primarily over the Antarctic. Right. And now if we get to a situation where ozone holes start creeping around the northern hemisphere and sort of go float about, uh, it exacerbates the issues of the chemtrails, puts more pressure on the government to try and stop these episodic uh, instances of radiation poisoning and the, and the damage to both the people but uh, also plant and animal life. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I mean, it's going to affect every, every yeah. living thing, not just human beings but every living thing. Um, two questions here. One of them, um, somebody wanted to know the Indian moon, moon probe, if they found any goodies, and if so, will they go public with it? I don't know if that was anything in your reports. No, we haven't discussed that, but I believe that they will uh, okay. go public with it. Uh, I know that there is a, an extraordinarily high volume of encrypted discussion around that subject in particular languages that suggest that, indeed, a lot of people are very excited. Ah, interesting. Uh, the next question is if uh, if if any anything that's come up about Obama being physically threatened this year. That's a real problem for us because it's so hot. Emotionally, okay. there's very little nuance in there to work uh, with, and we get just extremes. People that really just don't care, and then those people that are just uh, so upset that their jaws are locking together, and you know they've got this uh, this racial issue going, uh, and. We have indications of that, but I don't have anything that I'm taking seriously at a personal level yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. In other words... I I don't see any spikes. I don't see any anomalies in the data flow that suggest that I really ought to burrow down in it just yet. Right. And, of course, um, that's the other thing I wanted to kind of uh, talk about real quick, because right now uh, we're going into... Is this a build... Uh, yeah, we're going to go into building tension, correct. Right, and then by, when is it, March? I'll scoot up to the chart and find out here. I'm going to have to put my glasses on. March, 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 it releases again. Correct. Uh, uh, we see that in um, uh, the end of March, first part of April, we reach a plateau, say, around March the oh, 12th or so. We'll hit this little plateau.